Guys, welcome back to the Campfire Jelly YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed my new 30 second timer to get you guys vibed up, get you moving. You know, we don't usually do a live for a documentary, but when it's about my Taurus sister, Janet Jackson, you know I had to. If you follow me on TikTok, then you saw that we went live last night watching it together. The first two hours, the very first two hours of this documentary, I was, well, first of all, the first minute Janet's in Gary, Gary, Indiana. There's a mural of her brothers and she starts to cry. And I said, this is too much. This is too much. Too soon. Too soon. Guys, I am going to give you an opportunity to call in and share your thoughts on part one of the Janet Jackson documentary. <sighs> OK. All right. Here I am. Here I am. If you're on the East Coast, I know everyone is digging out from snow. That's what I was doing this morning. You know, originally I said I was going to come in live like around 1230, but I, I had to push it back because there's just so much I wanted to do. I wanted to shave. <laughs> I wanted to shovel. And I wanted to rewatch the documentary just to highlight certain parts that stood out to me. And I'm sure there are going to be parts that stood out to you that you want to mention. Like the video, I'm going to drop the call in link in just a minute. But let me just go through some of the highlights for you. So this was only part one. But it seems as if A&E and Lifetime, because they're airing on both networks, it seems that, that they broke this up into like a series where it's like a part one, a part two, a part three, and a part four. Part one and two aired last night. This documentary spanned five years of Janet Jackson's life. Five years. They've been covering and documenting her life for five years, these last five years for this documentary. As you know, we've been excited about this, this documentary since they announced that it was even happening. Janet, no matter how people feel about it, think if she's lying, telling the truth, whatever it may be, this is her truth. If we, if we are, can sit down and listen to Jenny Wen from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City's truth, we can definitely sit down and listen to the, the mega legend and icon that is Janet Jackson. And you know, I love my Taurus, my Tauruses, my Taurus brothers and my Taurus sisters. I don't love all of them. Hey, Drew, Sidora. Sidebar, Drew Sidora has a uh, Lifetime movie coming. I won't be watching. I am going to be watching single black female. Amy, uh, Amber, Ry Amber Riley. Mm, that looks good, but you know, lifetime. But a lot of you have been saying the same thing that I've been saying. Why lifetime? Why did she decide to do lifetime? Well, I'm sure lifetime it was willing to pay way more than HBO where you don't get commercials. Commercials, advertisers, that's money. And I know what you're thinking. Janet doesn't need the money. So, so she's got a baby. <laughs> Don't forget, she's got a baby. Tonight is part two, the final two parts of the Janet Jackson documentary. We will be watching it with, with my TikTok fam. You should be following me on TikTok. But let's just talk briefly. You look... I don't want this this live to be four hours because we could we could talk for five hours about Janet Jackson and her career and her impact on the music industry, on on the entertainment industry, on the influence of some of your faves. Just saying. Some of your faves. But this documentary is executive produced by Janet. This is her story. And she says, you know, like a lot of celebrities say, you know, so many people want to tell your story, but I'm deciding to take this moment to tell my story my way. And because she's a tourist, I know some of you don't believe in that stuff. That's okay. That's okay. I don't judge you. You don't judge me. Okay. But I looked up her birth chart. Janet and I share something besides our tourist uh, Sun sign. We both have a fire moon sign. Where's them tarot when you need her? <laughs> we also have a water rising uh, ascendant sign. Hers is Scorpio, mine is Cancer. Damn. <laughs> so I was like, oh, damn it. I love Janet even more. But that also explains why Janet is so balanced. I know people are shading Tauruses, but... Whatever. Look at us. Icon. We got an icon that's a Taurus. Just saying. Shout out to all the Tauruses in the building. Yes. <laughs> I see you guys. All right. Hey, life at least a soul sister. Tauruses are good people. Look, I also understand those that are, are frustrated with certain Tauruses because, you know, we're slow to move. We're slow to move. But you saw Janet in that studio, right? Some of you don't know that I have a musical background. 
that I have music available on Spotify. I'm not telling you to go listen to it. I'm just saying people don't realize I've worked in the studio. I've written music. I've worked and managed artists. So her in the studio, I was like, oh, the studio can be because you're all creatives. You're all so passionate. And you just had this mega hit. Not that I know of a mega hit, but I can only imagine then the pressure to follow up that hit. I'm sure Jimmy felt it. I'm sure Janet felt it, but she's also a tourist. So it takes a lot to get her there. So I know Jimmy, you, what's Jimmy's sign? Can someone look that up for me? Jimmy Jam sign. But of course, we're also forgiving. Look, we're forgiving. We will get to the studio stuff. Let's start at the top. Janet as a baby. Janet, look, Janet can't say she grew up poor. Janet, you did not grow up poor. You were in that small house in Gary, Indiana for like a hot second. You probably barely remember being there. She says it. She barely remembers being there. Janet grew up in Encino, but she experienced racism in Encino, California. And some of you that are from that area said, yup, yup. But she grew up in this, she grew up in a way that I can't even imagine. Some of your favorite celebrities and icons that you, Marvin Gaye, Diana Ross, David Bowie. How are we br just brushing over? I mean, David Bowie's long and gone. And we know David Bowie has a past. But offering Michael Jackson drugs? The fact that Michael was able to even be a, a, a smidge normal is a miracle. Is a miracle. Uh-uh. Jamila says, Geminis unite. What are we talking about in the chat? Oh, Jimmy Jam's a Libra. That also explains to me, I thought to myself today, some of my closest friends, two of my closest friends are Libras. Shout out to the Libras. Apparently, we see each other. But we could get into an argument just like that. I'm just saying. Especially when you're creative and you're in the studio. We will get to it. We will get to it. Look, I'm having my cashava shake. They're not a sponsor, but they should be. <laughs> Look at my Janet behind me. You see my Janet behind me? I had to have Janet behind me today, y'all. Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? We are recapping the Janet, part one of the Janet documentary that aired on a &E in Lifetime last night. Two hours of understanding who Janet Jackson really is. And this is through her own voice and eyes. And we get to see um, her brother, Randy. Okay, Randy, why do you keep referring to Janet, um, to, your, to both of your fathers, your father, your father, your father, <laughs> your father. I mean, I'm good for saying that's your friend. I'm good for it. If you know me, you know. I'm good for saying, yeah, your friend. I just said that the other day to someone. <laughs> your friend. Just say, okay, Tasha says, I rate it as a 10. For those of you that are in my YouTube live uh, chat, I asked, the, I set up a poll there and I asked the question. Overwhelmingly though, all of you loved it. Between eight and 10, you said you loved it. 75% of you said it. Um, some, some of you weren't, you know, a little mixed about it. 22% between seven and five. Um, and a, a very small smidgen of you thought it was a trash documentary. And look, the documentary is going to continue to air tonight, part two, part three and four, technically part two for, for those of you that don't realize it, but it's like a four part documentary that was, um, take they, she, they, she took like five years to do it, which a lot of document, a good documentary takes time. Not, you know, shout out to Beyonce. <laughs> no shit to Beyonce, but you know, we've gotten documentaries from Beyonce that didn't span that amount of time. Hopefully um, she is documenting, you know, Beyonce, she is documenting her life over time. So I can, I can only imagine we're going to get one, but it's too soon. Janet is 50 something years old. It was time for a documentary and she's lived a life. Janet literally is telling us in this, ep, uh, in this part one of the documentary of partying with people like Diana Ross, partying with legends, Marvin Gaye are at her house hanging out. Damn. The fact that she's normal, even a smidgen normal, says a lot. Janet didn't grow up poor. She better never say that she grew up poor. Michael, on the other hand, grew up poor. I can imagine them in Gary, Indiana, in that two-bedroom apartment. And how many of, their, of them were there? And I didn't realize 2300 Jackson Street was already 2300 Jackson Street. They just happened to be Jacksons, living on Jackson Street. I, I could have sworn they named it after them. But that was a small house. 
that was a very, very small house. But if you've been a Janet Jackson fan, then you already know that she had music before Control. And it, it's, we, we pretend that didn't happen. Apparently, so does Janet, because there was that period of time that her father managed her career. And some people do love those albums. I've never met a person that has. Even Janet didn't. She said it wasn't, she didn't get to pick the, the cover. But as you know, Joe Jackson was controlling, but Joe Jackson was necessary. He was necessary for Michael's career, all of their careers, and Janet as well. He, when, when the Jacksons fired um, Joe Jackson as their manager, he said he was going to focus his, his eyes on Janet and creating her career. He was going to make her bigger than Michael Jackson. And some people will argue that she was. And I've always said the fact that Janet Jackson could exist as the baby sister of Michael Jackson and be an icon in her own right tells you the power of my Taurus sister. <laughs> tells you the power of my Taurus sister. Um, uh, Live Life says, I like that they acknowledge their dad's sacrifice. Yes. Because, you know, you remember the movie. That was an excellent movie on VH1 about the Jacksons. But it really made Joe Jackson out to be enemy number one. And maybe he was, but we all grew up with parents that were very strict. And, and maybe in your eyes, you would probably view it as like, oh my gosh, they were terrible. And maybe smidgen abusive. Not saying that my parents, I'm just saying some of y'all parents, like some of y'all parents. <laughs> and Joe Jackson, maybe a smidgen. But I can also understand that, you know, I'm also one of those people that believes that you choose your parents before you come into this life. All right, we can have a long conversation about that, but... Janet wouldn't be in music. We wouldn't have Janet as a musician if it wasn't for her father. She just talked about happening to, you know, they had a recording studio at the home. Again, she didn't grow up. She didn't grow up poor. <laughs> she didn't grow up poor. They had a recording studio in the home. And she was, you know, playing around, you know, probably whispering into a, into a mic. Yeah, I heard from a friend today. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. Lord, she created ASMR <laughs> before <laughs> anything so janet's father discovered it and he said you're going to do music and thank god for joe jackson may he rest in peace may he rest in peace i didn't even open my notes y'all i just went in i took some notes not that i even need them because i know janet jackson's career i know her story but it's interesting to get it from her perspective right now <laughs> dhs keeps keep, keeps a whisper on a track I'm saying it, not whisper, yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Even when she speaks. But a lot of you were saying in my TikTok chat last night when we were watching it, a lot of them, the, you know, the siblings all kind of sound the same. Janet and Rebe forever look alike. We will get into the baby in a second. Let me take a little sip, y'all, because I made this. I didn't eat anything today. This is my cassava shake. They're, you know, they're not a sponsor, but I love them. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so Janet, you know, that's how she got into her career. But as you know, before she even got into music, music, she was performing at such a young age. I think she was like seven years old. She's on a, a TV show, but it never really went to her head. You know, she's in Vegas with her brothers performing. Sidebar, why didn't I not go to her metamorphosis in Vegas? Shame on me back in 2019. Janet, please do another Vegas stint. I know people want you to do, do a tour, but I want you to do Vegas too. Can you do both? <laughs> Can you do both? I got to see Janet before I leave this planet. <sighs> Just saying. Um, <laughs> so she was, you know, performing and acting. We remember her in Good Time. Sorry, I, I apologize if you guys had your headphones in and I just shocked the hell out of you. <laughs> Thank you so much to my TikTok, TikTok fan for the gifts. Thank you for tapping your screens. We are live on the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. We're also live on the Kempire and Kempire Daily on Facebook. We're live on Twitter. Hey, Twitter, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, head on over to Twitter and follow me there. I'm shading you. I'm, look, I'm shading you. I'm shading. I'm letting you know what I'm watching. I'm live tweeting. At the Kempire on Twitter. Let's get to 10,000 on Twitter, please. Thank you. <laughs> Just say it. Let me say thank you. We got a couple of super chats. Thank you, Matt, for the super chat. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Mm. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> 
Dulcinea, thank you so much for the super chat. Correction, Jimmy Jam is a Gemini. Sorry, folks. Oh, he's still an air sign. He's still an air sign. I don't really love Geminis, though. <laughs> no shade. No shade. Uh, oh, I just lost. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I almost lost your super chat, Danielle. Thank you so much, Danielle, for the super chat. Danielle says, Joe Jackson is a blueprint before Matthew Nose and Chris Jenner. And so was Katherine Jackson. That little outfit that um, the Jackson 5 wore, we found out that uh, Katherine Jackson's the one who sold those suckers together. She was Tina Knows before Tina Knows. I said, damn. Auntie Eva says, I saw Janet on TV. I mean, what a time. She literally, literally grew up as a performer, but she only got into music in later in her teens. And of course, we don't, we don't, we don't recognize. <laughs> look, 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 Russ says, Gemini here, unsubscribing. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I love, look, I love you guys in a different way, but Gemini's, y'all can work a nerve. <laughs> look, <laughs> y'all can work a nerve, just saying. But it's okay. I'm just shocked. You know, we only got to hear from uh, Tito. We didn't get anything from Jermaine. We didn't get anything from the some of the other brothers, um, like Jackie. But we did get from Jermaine, Randy, and Reby. Reby is the oldest. Reby looks great. She's the oldest of all of them, right? She, she's older than Jackie, too, right? I don't remember. Y'all will remember better than me. The shade. <laughs> Exactly. Apple Charm says Catherine was vital as well. I mean, she was vital. We always knew that Catherine Jackson was vital because she was the foundation. She was the one maintaining the home. But we I don't think we realized that Catherine Jackson was out here sewing stuff, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, Ruby, Ruby is the oldest. That's what I thought. Ruby looked great. Ruby had some music, too, y'all. Ruby had music back in the day, and then she had some music um, not too long ago, too. Love me some Ruby. What? Ruby is 71 years old? Ruby and Janet look so much alike. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, Taurus can work a nerve with being too stubborn. Mind you, I'm a Gemini son with a Mercury in Taurus. All right. Well, you don't have to, you don't have to throw. No, I understand Tauruses can work a nerve too because we don't want to move. We don't want to move. Just saying. Anyways, let me take another sip. <laughs> Um. Oh wait, what did someone say? Oh, okay. Wait, Matt says after twenty five years, my wife is a Gemini, a Gemini man. I know, I know, brother. I know. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, okay, Data, go back to where you came from. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. If you're just joining us, we are talking about the Janet Jackson part one of the Janet Jackson documentary. We will be talking about part two probably later tomorrow as opposed to around this time because, you know, tomorrow we also do our Ladies Who List Atlanta recap at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It is a subscribers only live chat tonight or this afternoon, depending on where you're watching from. It might be tonight there. Um Yes, Cameron says, "Don't don't y'all sleep on Reby when the uh, oh when the centipede is oh uh, when the centipede is hot." Yes, 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 y'all. All right. Um, everyone, everyone's everyone's okay. This is not about Reby. We love Reby, but this is not about Reby. But I get it. Okay, yeah, and I know Jackie is the oldest boy, but um, Reby is the oldest of all of them. So the Janet Jackson documentary. So we get to see Janet. We do, because you can't tell Janet Jackson's story without telling some of the Jackson story and their influence on her and her life because of being associated with the Jacksons. So we, we, we cover that area, but we also cover her relationships. And as you know, if you know anything about pop culture, and you know we are the curators of pop culture here on the channel, we understand that there was this big rumor for years for years that Janet Jackson had a secret baby that she had her sister Reby Jackson raise. There were rumors that Reby Jackson's daughters were Janet's. And she clears that up in this, in this documentary and says, no, it wasn't true. When she gained weight on, on the set of fame it was because she was on birth control. But Janet has a history of secrets. Straight shooter. So a lot of people didn't trust her. She got secretly married to James DeBarge. Sidebar, they found out some really cute. I was like, James DeBarge was a cute. The DeBarges were cuties. Come on. Even Chico. 
but they have a substance abuse problem in that family. It, you know, they say that, you know, substance abuse is genetic and that entire, no, well, not the entire family, but quite a few of them, even most recently, Chico DeBarge, they have substance abuse issues. And apparently that was also an issue with James. But what was, when she dropped the mic, she says, apparently she was attracted to people that have issues with drugs. I was like, Janet, no, not you dropping the mic on it on us with that one. And then it went into commercial. But she didn't realize that James had this issue until after they were married. They got secretly married. She was very young at the time. I think she was like 18. But there was this rumor and even the family. Up until I think even not even five years ago, the family, the DeBarge family were saying that she had the secret baby. But then again, when you look at the people like Chico DeBarge that we're talking about, were they talking about it to get an extra check for something else? I believe Janet. I believe Janet did not have a baby. And I just feel like it, that would be hard to hide. Yes, she gained weight, but that would be hard to hide. She was only married to Chico DeBarge. Not, ooh, no, she wasn't married to Chico. She was only married to James DeBarge. For a year. She was only married to him for a year. But she said, you know, she described, you know, a moment of, you know, trying to hide the pills from him. Y'all know I had pictures, right? Chico was a cutie back in the day. I couldn't find the cute pictures, but I did find this. You can so see the addiction in his face in this picture. Can't you? And Janet has always struggled with her weight. As a tourist, I understand, not that I struggle with my with my weight, but we love food. We, we always, you know, we always love food. But here you can so see, you know, look, he came from a famous family as well. This is why they related to each other. When she talked about him, though, I could still feel the love. Like there was a genuine love there. Even today, her talking about James DeBarge was not one of this relationship was terrible to me and... I can't stand him. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. So she talked about her relationships. The, at least the, the first two significant ones, her first two marriages, of course, one with James DeBarge, that ended in an, in an annulment because they were only married a year. And then when she comes into her own with the album Control, we and for some people don't realize that Paula Abdul was instrumental, not just in teaching Janet how to dance. Look, what am I doing? What, what is going on with me right now? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> mm. She was also instrumental in cracking the shell of Janet Jackson, getting her out there as an artist. And she got emotional because I think she saw a side of Janet then that we still have not seen. And to see Janet probably be reborn in that moment. I understood why Paula was, was crying in that moment. I understood. So Paula was instrumental. Y'all better put some respect on Paula Abdul, not just as an artist, but what she has done for pop music and a pop artist like the icon Janet Jackson. So, so put some respect on Paula Abdul. Put some respect on Renee Alizondo. And I know some of you are like, oh, Renee. You remember how that divorce went? He was trying to get money because he was so instrumental in her career. He wrote songs that, you know, he didn't get credit for. Renee has moved on, though, y'all. Ten years after his divorce, he did end up re remarrying. He's still married to this uh, new woman. But put some respect on Renee Alizondo, okay? Do I have a picture of Renee? Hold on, y'all. I know I have a picture of Renee somewhere. Did I not? Oh, no, I did. Y'all know. Y'all know I'm prepared. Renee was there during her control album. Her control album was the first time without her father, first time working with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. She went all the way out there with, with this music. I'm sure a lot of you can reflect on what that album means to you and your life chapter at the time. But this was also around the time that she met Renee Alizondo, who comes from a family that works in film. And for 10 years, he documented 
Janet's life and her career. And we never saw that footage until this documentary. Until this documentary, Janet definitely has a type. <laughs> Can we talk? I don't know what she was doing with Jermaine Dupri. I think she was just, you know, going through things. But it was necessary. Her relationship was significant for Jermaine Dupri. And I'm sure we're going to hear her talk about why that relationship was significant in tonight's part two. But she definitely, she was after, after Jermaine, she went right back to her type with, uh, with, with some, with, you know, the father of her, her, her baby's father, her ex-husband too. But put some respect on Renee Alizondo. Because of him, we have this footage from, you know, footage that we've never seen. But he was also very instrumental in the behind the scenes, the visuals, the five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> but it was also uh, based on how the family and people were describing the relationship. Let's remember, they were together. 1987, I think, is when they met. They got divorced in 2000. They, they got secretly married. We even got to see footage of the engagement. I can only imagine what that relationship was like. And she seemed genuinely happy, like that was her partner in crime. You know I had to look up his astrological sign. I was like, oh, I got to find me one. And then I found out he was a cancer and I said, hell to the no. <laughs> But I get why it worked. I get why it worked. But I also understand why it ended. Let's put some respect on Renee Alessandro. I think a lot of, especially fans, probably wrote him off as someone that was, you know, when you mix your relationship and your career with someone, sometimes that can get very dicey. And a lot of times the public will just say that you're a leech, but he actually was very talented and very instrumental in the visuals, in the sounds, in what she was doing. I know. Like, I'm just joking. I hope, I hope you guys don't take me serious when I shade other signs. I'm joking. Um, cancer here. Shout out to the Kansas. I have a cancer rising. I have a cancer rising. So I understand, look, I understand you. We see each other. Okay. Exactly. Donna says Renee's footage was awesome because we got to see moments with Janet that we probably would have never seen. I need to get me a Renee Alessandro in my life to document everything, especially when I have a moment and I'm a cussing, cussing in the house like these mother fathers. <laughs> yes, part two comes to, um, on tonight for those who missed it. They will show, of course, part one right before. So in case you missed part one of the Janet Jackson documentary, they're not paying me. They didn't even send me a screener. Thanks a lot, uh, Lifetime and a and &E. I'm, I'm joking. I didn't even reach out for one. I probably should have. But I, I, look, here we are. We're still talking about it. We're still promoting it. We're still letting you know that the Janet Jackson documentary is now available. I know they put like part one on, um, like on demand. Uh, uh, Jordan says you can hire one don't marry him <laughs> I, I agree I wasn't talking about marry I that's probably the one thing that you will see me never do because I just don't think it will work for me personally I'm not saying it doesn't work for other people I, I'm, I can't mix the the personal and the business I don't want that I don't want that for me I don't want that for me E love what was your comment let me look let me see if I can find it where was your comment was it recent Oh, wait, this comment is funny. My mom is a Taurus and my dad is a Cancer and they've been married 54 years still together. Wow. Don't get me wrong. It can work. I've dated a Cancer before. And I can see why it would work. I just look, work my nerve. <laughs> Shout out to the Cancers. Look, I know plenty of Cancers. And apparently it worked for Janet. They were together from 1987 to 2000, they divorced. All right, I've digressed way too much. Look, <laughs> if you're just joining us, guys, we're talking about the Janet Jackson documentary that aired on Lifetime and a and &E. uh, Part two will air tonight. If you're watching the replay of this, please let us know your thoughts on the documentary, favorite moments. Let's talk about her relationship with Michael Jackson. So she says that she was so close with 
uh, Randy and Michael. It makes sense to me that she was so close to Randy. They were, you know, the younger siblings. They were closer in age. I didn't realize how close she was. I mean, I did know because she, she said this before that she was um, very close with Michael Jackson. I think people probably thought she just said that. But I can see them being close. Michael was what? A Virgo, right? Two Earth signs. Two Earth. Look, we're, we're, we're talking. Look, we're going to talk astrology. If you are a fan of the show, we talk astrology here because I, I believe it. But Jimmy Jam had said at one point that she had to deal with being in Michael's shadow, even after the Control album was such a huge success. And, you know, I don't believe that there was competition between them because Tauruses don't look, we can be competitive. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but we are, we're not going to let you know that we're being competitive. You're not going to know that we are being competitive. We are competitive more so with ourselves as opposed to other people. Like we'll pay attention. If we're doing something, you, you've seen it with candy on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We're not going to be outwardly competitive or vindictive if we don't get something or win or jealous. And blah. no, we, we don't, we don't, we don't work like that. Right, Tauruses? Look, my Tauruses. But her relationship with Michael, of course, anytime, you know, especially with the control success, she dealt with a lot of questions. And that man, I know that man, if he's still alive, if he if he's still with us, that asked her about the the oxygen oxygen uh, tank. As you know, a lot of people, there were a lot of rumors about the Jacksons over over the years. A lot, you know, Janet with the bait, secret baby. Oh, wait, rewind. Can we just re rewind for a second? Janet and the secret baby. She denied it in the documentary. But y'all know, if y'all were watching with me last night, I was like, everyone thought the song on Janet's album, the Jan you know, Janet, period. Where, where are you now? Everyone said that was about her secret baby. I still love that song. <laughs> but if you listen to the lyrics, it makes sense. You know, look, people read into things. I believe, Janet, that there was no secret, secret baby. I also believe, Janet, that there was no competition between her and her brother, but she dealt with a lot of people comparing them. She dealt with a lot of people asking her questions about him during her interview. You know, Control, though, you know, a lot of people say, you know, that was her breakout album. You know, you would think people would, you know, not compare them because, you know, she had achieved her own success. But remember, that was her first time doing that. Then of course Michael Jackson. What was it? Was it the it was the bad tour that she went to go see him in Europe? I can't remember everything. Y'all look elephant brain and all. And if you grew up watching Michael Jackson, you knew stadiums of people passing out over Michael Jackson. Mostly white people <laughs> passing out over Michael Jackson. So for her to see that probably for the very first time. She was like, what is this? And then she had to follow up the Control album to do Rhythm Nation. Rhythm Nation, as you know, is, probably, is still one of a kind. It was this pop album that was also about social injustice before it was popular to, to, to do and talk about. And let's not sleep on Janet Jackson's writing game. I mean, I was always such a big, you know, when I would get the CDs, I would look through the um, the CD cover, who wrote what. I was always fascinated with that. So I knew Janet Jackson wrote and produced a lot of her songs, if not 99% of them with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. But we got to see that writing process. Shout out to Renee Alizondo. We got to see that process. We also got to see Jimmy Jam get the wrath of a tourist in, a, in the studio. She was like, why are you laughing? That's when you got a little crunk in, in Janet's voice. Why are you laughing? I'm going home. <laughs> We're good for walking off. Don't be surprised one day if y'all annoy me enough. I'll be like, all right, I'm ending the live. I'm getting out of here. If you follow me when I would used to do Kempire Radio live, I, we've had moments like that where people have just annoyed the hell out of me. I'm like, I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm human. But it takes a lot to, 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 to get me to that place. It takes a lot to get me to that place. So we got to see a little bit about, so we get to see some footage that Renee captured, but we didn't get to see everything. 
So she could literally put out just a documentary about the Rhythm Nation album, a documentary about uh, the Janet album, a documentary about the Velvet Rope album. I hope she does. I do want to know, though, did she get this footage in the divorce or did she have to do more business with with Renee when she decides to do this documentary? I'm sure she didn't have to do it herself. Maybe Lifetime and A&E paid paid him for it. Because they were married. I know it was a contentious divorce. It wasn't too bad like some of the other divorces. But, we, you know, there were rumors that he was saying that I created and wrote stuff that I didn't get credit for. But there's still more footage that we didn't get to see. He documented her for 10 years. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> look, look. Thank you, Renee. Sister on the move says my tor my best friend is a Taurus. Sister, uh, sister, sister Renee. Uh, sister on the move. What was your um? What's your sign? I always like to see who's friends with who. I'm just saying. Uh, life with life with uh, Leah Sosa is that oh Renee got paid. Oh, no, he definitely got paid. But I wonder if he got paid again for the documentary. Or did she get it in the divorce? Just saying. I want to know. These are the questions that I have. Just saying. Sister says, yeah, no kids from that marriage. I th That's a good question that I would want to ask Janet Jackson. Now, that would be an interview. Everyone asks me, what, who, who do you want to interview next? And I you know, like, and this is not, you know, uh, you know, you know, me being uppity, but after you interview someone like Oprah Winfrey, 10 years marks, today, it's kind of hard to interview other people. It's not that other people aren't interesting. It's just like, <sighs> happy birthday to Oprah Winfrey. Happy birthday to Oprah. But Janet would be a good interview. She would be a good interview. Yeah, so remember that? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, Courtney's dropping tea. Renee cheated with her. Um, no, it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the car. Uh, the car. Eh, I can't even speak today. It wasn't that she cheated that he cheated with her. He had cheated with someone else and she got involved because she was also a friend and she had told Janet that, that was the rumor on the street. I don't know if they're going to address that in this, but that was the rumor on the street. Train with Jazz says maybe she tried to get pregnant or miscarried with Renee. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, Morgan says my mom is, is the Taurus and I'm a Virgo. We don't get along at all. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. Yes, Tina Landon. Thank you. I couldn't remember the name. They didn't cheat together. It, it was She was the one who told Janet about him. And that's what, look, that's what happened. They had a falling out. But remember, they reunited after Michael died. And she was a part of that whole tribute to Michael at the MTV. We are going through it today. We are, look, we are getting our 80s and 90s babies going on right now. I love it, though. I love it. Guys, if you're just joining us, we have over 800 people in the live chat. We have over 50 people in my TikTok chat. I appreciate you all being here. Um, uh, Gator Pup says Janet is amazing. Um, Christy says he probably did. I think in reference to Renee getting paid or... Um, let me see what you guys are saying here. Oh, happy belated birthday. I guess Oprah and I are tight. <laughs> Still like Oprah. Yeah. Um, we are showing our years. <laughs> Look, 80s baby right here. But I have to say, you know, some of the Michael Jackson concerts I wouldn't have been able to go to because I was a baby. Some of you guys were there. <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Um, and he says, wait, hold on. We're bringing out all the rumors. Didn't JD have a side chick with a house and a car completely life on the side? Why or oh, why uh, that do that to Janet? I don't know about all that. I mean, there are a lot of rumors. I want to see how they address it in, on tonight's part two of Janet's documentary. I don't see why Janet has a reason to lie at this point in her life. But you never know. You never know. I'm sure there's a part of her that doesn't want to throw people under the bus. I want to know about the Janet and Bobby years. <laughs> like, I do want to know. Because, you know, Bobby talked about it in his book. Just saying. All right. We have almost 820-something people in the live chat. 
let's get to 400 likes. I'm going to drop the call-in link once we get to 400, because where are we at right now? Yeah, we are almost there. Come on, guys. Like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. You know, another way you can support the channel is getting a coldest water bottle. Get your coldest water bottle today. You can get it in gray. They come in multiple colors, multiple sizes. Keeps your water cold for 36 plus hours. You see, insulated. And... And for 10% off, use the discount code KEMP10. Again, that's KEMP10. Get your coldest water bottle today. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for the super chat, Doll Baby. Doll Baby says, I said what I said over Oprah. <laughs> okay, good girl. <laughs> you might have to do it in a super chat. <laughs> okay, um, hold on. Destiny says, uh, Kempire Wiki says, Jimmy Jam is June 6th. That makes him a Gemini. Yes. Um, Delsenia said that earlier. Um, so I get I get why they had frustrations. I, I used to manage a Gemini, and we had moments very much like the Janet and J uh, Jimmy situation. Just saying. <laughs> Fox is, why, but why are y'all over Oprah, right? Leave Oprah alone. It's her birthday. I don't care if y'all over Oprah. Happy birthday, O. Look, look Lady O. If you guys missed my interview with Oprah Winfrey, kept, check out the Kempire Radio YouTube channel. You can see it there. Yeah, shout out to the Twitch fam. Hey, Jack Star. Shout out to the Twitch family, Kempire. Yes. Shout out to the Twitch fam. Guys, we are live on Twitch at the Kempire. Follow me there. Also, I'm live on Twitter. Hey, Twitter. How you guys doing? Y'all still being shady? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, Teresa says, Taurus moon, Gemini sun. Don't judge me. <laughs> but you got that Taurus moon. That's why it makes a difference. Yes. Donna says, happy birthday, Oprah. All right. Have we gotten to 400? We're almost at 400 likes, guys. Let's get to 400 likes. I'm going to drop the call-in link, call link so you guys can share your thoughts on this Janet Jackson documentary, part one. We will recap part two tomorrow evening. So if you are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. But also subscribe to our texting community and i completely forgot to text our community this morning that's because busy i know some of y'all think i'm just here not doing anything but you're getting daily and consistent content and i'm busy literally creating countdowns like this one i'm just gonna do it because i it, it's short <laughs> did that me <laughs> oh my goodness sorry y'all had to have a little dance break <laughs> oh my goodness okay <laughs> new york city girl hey delsenia she says i'm the same age as janet 1966 baby oh wow Doll baby, thank you so much for the super chat. Because of the because of that hit piece put out on Michael, I know a lot of people have their feelings about. Can can she have her birthday though? <laughs> I know we're talking about Michael and Janet today. Let's just talk about her relationship with Michael though. Janet talked a little bit about her relationship and the minute she felt a change in their relationship, and that was around the um thriller album and she says anytime he had an album they would sit in his car and listen to the music and she says she noticed a difference in him and it does it, it makes sense to me that was a monumental moment in michael's life and i think he also felt a separation from himself and and his family during that time he he was catapulted into a whole other level of fame which I'm sure it's, uh, none of us could understand because we're like, he was already hugely famous at that point. But if you know, Thriller at the time, 70 million albums worldwide. People could barely sell a million now. The same, I could also say for like an Adele. She, she also is a phenomenon selling th that level of music around the world. I'm sure that's changed her mind and, and how she deals with the world and her family and friends. 
I'm hoping in part two we get to see her reconnect with Michael because I, I think that they do because, you know, of course, we got Scream. Remember Scream? At the time, the most expensive music video ever made. But we also get to see Janet launch her very first, her debut world tour. Still the best-selling debut world tour by any artist. Congratulations to Janet Jackson. Renee was there during that time. And she was creating fantastic music during that time. Number one songs, number one albums, selling out. She had a dream that, she, you know, no one showed up. But then when she opened up, she was like, oh, my God, they're online waiting for me. <sighs> Jan is still selling out stadiums. I'm just saying. Just saying. No matter the rumors that people like to spread that she can't sell out a, a tour, but people still get very much excited for a Jan Jackson tour. <laughs> Kirby Jersey says, unpopular opinion. I don't get Adele. No, I can I can see that. I can see that. Don't let Del Senya come get you. Uh SC says Adele is no comparison. People were fainting and passing out for my I, I agree. I'm not comparing them. What I'm saying though, that level of success. She's the only one right now that has that level of success worldwide. The same for a Beyonce. That has to be something, it's got to be something not just for, for their mindset as an artist, but also the mindset of those that are in, in their lives. Uh, that's what I'm comparing. I'm not comparing, I'm not comparing apples and oranges. I'm not comparing them at all. Okay. Um, let me see what we got. Micah says Adele has a nice voice. She doesn't have her star, uh, have star power though. Ooh, y'all are so shady about Adele. <laughs> y'all are, are so shady. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's so funny how you guys run with the narrative. I never said that she, Adele was Michael Jackson. I just said she's the only artist selling on such a level that we have not seen. And that was Michael at his, at his time, was selling on a level that we had not seen. I'm not comparing them. Calm down with that narrative. Don't try and cancel me now. Okay. All right. Have we hit, look, we hit it. Let me drop the call in link because I know you guys want to call in and share your thoughts. Let's do that. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. There we go. All right. And for those that are calling in, Let's keep, where's my timer? <laughs> look, 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 where's my timer? Let me pull up my timer because I know we only normally use it for, um, for town halls. But I just have a feeling I need to use that today. If I could find my timer, where is my timer? Hold on, y'all. Okay, let's see. Where is my timer? Oh, here it is. Let's bring the timer in. Okay. I'm going to put the timer over here. Put the timer over here. Okay, we'll pause it. All right. <laughs> Guys, all right. Don't forget, a new episode of my podcast will be coming out probably tomorrow just because I want to watch the rest of the Janet documentary and then share my thoughts in an un um just a very a different way on the podcast okay and some other topics that we haven't addressed anywhere else so subscribe to the kempai radio podcast on all major podcast platforms nora said let the people let the people talk <laughs> no because there are already a lot of people backstage <laughs> All right. There are already a lot of people backstage. All right. We're going to take some callers, guys. If you're just joining us, we are, of course, talking about the Janet Jackson documentary that aired on Lifetime and A&E, for those that weren't uh, aware of that. So if you are watching the replay of this, I want to know your thoughts as well, how you would rate it. What was your favorite moment? What stood out to you? Um, again, the, the things that stood out to me was her relationship with Renee Alizondo, her relationship with her brother, Michael. But that was really a small part of the documentary. But as you know, Michael went through a lot of things later on. So I'm thinking that's going to be addressed tomorrow. Okay. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, tonight. We will address it tomorrow. Okay. All right, Ashley, I'm going to bring you up. Hold on. Let me just put the names here. Boop. Okay. Ashley. Hi. 
how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good, good. I'm going to just go ahead and get started. Um, mm -hmm. It was so good. I love that she got the chance to tell her story in her own words and by nobody else. And I also went on Twitter and it was wilding a little bit. I hated how when I went on Twitter and pe certain people just had to throw Madonna in it. Let our girl Janet have her freaking moment. We're not talking about Madonna right now because as quiet as it's kept, Janet influenced the white girls just as much as she influenced the black girls. And Britney Spears herself has said that that Janet Jackson was one of her influences. So thank you so much. I had to get that off my chest because they was making me mad last night. You have a good rest of the day. You too. Thank you so much. And you kept it under a minute. <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. Hold on, y'all. All right. Donna Bell, I'm going to bring you up. Hey, hey Donna. Happy cold Saturday. Yes, Before I start, I want to say this, because this is my brother is a few years younger than me. Mm -hmm. I was in love with Michael Jackson when he was still. And please don't hate on me, y'all. When he was still a little black boy, I'm a little older. My brother loves Michael Thriller and the jackets and all of that on. I love Janet's um, interview last night. She's always been private. I respect people who won't even speak on Bobby Brown issues and things like that. I think it's the fans that want to know mm. more so like with the whole baby thing and even Reba laughing about it. Um, I, I, I loved the show. Can't wait until tonight. But um, people were saying in the chat about music and all that. Michael is just in another stratosphere. And I think like she made a comment, like he felt like he was in a freak show after a while. Mm -hmm. I think it just, it freaked him out. It scared him or whatever. So he was different doing him. That's the Michael I, I, I didn't understand. But see, I come from like Foster Silvers, the original DeBarge switch, Tommy DeBarge. Like they have always been fine and talented. They've always had drug issues. I don't know if this is my minute up, but I love and respect that there are some things Janet won't even address. I do that in life ignorance and things I want to address, you can, I don't even give it air. So I think that's how she did with uh, the, the, the Bobby Brown thing, the baby thing. I respect that. That That's a mature mind at that young age to still carry it on. I love her privacy and that she keeps her life like that because it keeps us wondering and guessing, but Janet is top and it, she set the stage for all of them under her. So, mm. and what I was going to say about comparisons, it's like, I hate the Michael Jordan, LeBron. Those were different times. We have internet, streaming music. Those are different ways of counting those measures now, yeah. like pre-MTV um, and all that, which was a blow up for a lot of Madonnas and things like that. Those were different, certain things you can't compare yeah. because of other variables in it. But I'm going to let the rest of the callers go. I just wanted to say happy cold 17 degrees in Cleveland Saturday. Everybody stay warm and safe, especially you East Coasters. Thank you. Have a good one, Dan Donna. You, you too. Bye. All right. Let's restart the clock. You know, Donna went over, but it's okay. You always have one person that goes over. <laughs> All right. Curvy Jersey, what's going on? Hey, Kempire. How you doing? How are I'm you? I'm calling from Plainfield, New Jersey, home of Parliament Funkadelic. All right. So I have one minute. So here we go. Um, I would like everyone to Google Bobby DeBarge. Um, he is the oldest brother of the DeBarge family, and he ultimately died of AIDS in 1995. He had his own issues with addiction. So the family has their issues with uh, addiction. And so the DeBarge family is very talented, but unfortunately, addiction kind of overshadowed their talent. So Bobby DeBarge was on Unsung on BET, so check it out. Um, I was surprised that she wrote Rhythm Nation. I thought that was more so uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis mm. as the influence. So I was surprised that she wrote it. Um, her father, her relationship with her father, um, it pulled my heartstrings that when she mentioned that uh, Michael Jackson and her were in the bedroom, it was just silence. I was really surprised at that. Um, the and then also she was interviewed by Oprah. I'm sorry, I'm over a minute. It's okay. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a grace period of, of another minute. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So Oprah interviewed, um, uh, what's her name? Janet back in the day when she was dating Jermaine Dupri, she found love with Jermaine because he hugged her fat rolls. At one point she was 180 pounds and, she, and Jermaine said that I love you with these fat rolls. So she was finally accepted through the thin and through the fat. And so I really like their relationship and I do want her to talk about the competition amongst women in the industry, especially with Whitney Houston. 
Um, Cause that back in the day was a lot of, you know, murmurs about that. So I would like for her to talk about that and also put respect on her name. She birthed JLo, she birthed Britney and she birthed Sierra. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Kirby George, it's a drop mic. <laughs> Georgia's backstage. What's going on, Georgia? What's going on, love? How are you? I'm good. Happy Janet Documentary Weekend. Oh, <laughs> Janet, Janet Appreciation Weekend. Okay, Janet Appreciation Weekend, honey, Janet Flowers Weekend, all the things of the things. I just appreciated this documentary as a Janet fan because I've watched a lot of documentaries. I've heard a lot of things. I've read a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things regarding Janet. So everything that she's talked about, I've heard extensive dialogue about through different mediums. So mm -hmm. seeing it in her words, her voice, her talking about it, there's a lot of things that she confirmed that I felt like I already knew. And then there was some things I was like, oh, that's a whole new perspective on it. I think that the Renee footage is amazing to see. I think she probably got it in the divorce and that was part of um, part of the thing because it took a long time to settle that divorce. And I feel like those tapes were probably part of it because that could have been a documentary that we got 20, 30 years ago. We could have been had that documentary. That Just imagine if that would have been airing at the same time as MTV's Icon. Mm. Imagine. That was it though. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in. Have a great rest of your day. Amy J, I'm going to bring you up in just a second, but I just want to remind you guys, don't forget to like this video and don't forget we will be live tonight on my TikTok, right, TikTok? Um, oh, <laughs> Live Life says, Whitney and Janet, no comparison. I mean, yeah, I agree with that. They they were just great at different things. Um, but don't forget, we will be on my TikTok tonight. Watch party. Don't miss it at the Kempire on TikTok. And TikTok, if you aren't following me, be sure to follow me also on Kempire Daily on TikTok. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers there so we can go live there. God forbid anything happens. And speaking of which, guys, don't forget to follow the Kempire Radio YouTube channel where you can listen to some of my past interviews with people like Music Soul Child, Brandy, and of course, the TV icon, Oprah Winfrey. Happy birthday to Oprah Winfrey. We're going to bring up Amy. What's going on, Amy? Hey, I, I tuned in. Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, goodbye. I'm not trying to be running off my mouth. But um, I tuned in um, kind of in and out last night. But uh, Janet was like my very first concert. <laughs> Sad to say, I got my first concert at 16 years old. She came to D.C. with Usher as her um, opener. That would always be like the best memory of my life because Janet gave us a show from the beginning to the end. It was points where, like, me as a 16 year old was exhausted from seeing how much she danced on that stage. So when I was watching the documentary, and I also saw Renee. That was something I remember. He was standing on the side, just watching intensively, making sure she hit all her her her, her moves and made her um cues and everything on the end. And everyone was saying, that's Renee, that's Renee, that's Renee. And I was like, who is that? So then watching the uh, documentary, I heard about Renee. I know his influence, but it really like made me give a little respect for him for being so being the creative force. I'm not trying to shade Janet, but it was a time where she was a little confused in her in her um, music when she got with Jermaine Dupri. I don't think he knew how to kind of like manage that and give it the creative edge that she always had mm -hmm. over her um, contemporaries. So that was one of the things I liked about the documentary, her sharing that. But um, everybody was like, he cheated on her. But I was like, but she was with Bobby, right? So I think that's probably the reason why she doesn't talk about so much about how bad the marriage was when it comes to that. I think they had to understand it. So that was all. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. Because I was like, she, she doesn't talk about Bobby, but that was during her marriage with Renee. And I was like, so I'm guessing they did cheat on each other. That's because I had to. I thought that too. I was like, they were together such a long time. How did when did the Bobby thing happen, or did the Bobby thing really happen? Bobby said it. It was in his dog. She did not send any cease and desist. She did not stop the the. So her not it, her not speaking on Bobby more so is her for her class being classy about it. Some people just don't kiss and tell, but I just always had the idea that like yeah, she dibbled in the dibbled in the um you know the brothers from time to time. But like seriousness, I don't think that was her thing. She had a husband that was her creative partner. So, mm -hmm. and I mean, I think about this, like the iconic moments of her being on uh, Rolling Stone with the um, hands over the breast, her doing Love and Never Do Without You. But yes, the poetic justice braids. And he was there that whole time. So, I mean, I want to give him his flowers too, although they broke up. 
that was the creative effort them together even though people are like crapping on him now i still think that was amazing but that whole situation watching it last night just brought back a lot of memories Mm. thank you for sharing them with (laughs) us amy (laughs) okay all right so yeah so the timeline for the bobby relationship some people are saying that it happened before renee but it'll be interesting to see if she even addresses it in the documentary i don't think the fact that janet didn't um do a cease and desist to bobby means that it uh it did happen because it takes a lot because there are a lot of people saying things about me that i haven't addressed (laughs) <laughs> so mm, you give relevance and attention to 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 certain things when you address them maybe she was just like i know the truth <laughs> you know i'm just saying all right yes Reby does look good can we just take a moment for Reby jackson 71 years old looking amazing and that is janet looks just like her big sister looks just like her big sister all right we're going to take these last couple of callers guys if you're just joining us we are recapping the first part of the janet jackson documentary that's on lifetime and a and e part two airs tonight so stay tuned for that and if you want to join us for a little watch party follow me on tiktok at the campfire all right miss brooklyn's backstage miss brooklyn how are you hey guys how are you i'm gonna take this thing off so we can see your face hold on <laughs> no there we go sounds... no that's fine we go. um just want to say i i i've I had to watch it because ever since my daughter, my youngest daughter was about, I don't know, four, she runs around, she'll tell anybody that Janet Jackson's her mother. <laughs> she has always said that and says it to this day. She tells her grandchildren, that's grandma. How do you feel about today. that? It, it's, listen, my oldest daughter says George Michaels is her father. Don't get me started. <laughs> it's, a joke joke <laughs> it's a running joke in our family and I love it. Um, I was lucky enough to see Janet when she was at Barclays after she had her son. Um, of course, my daughter made me get her those tickets, and I bought those tickets before she canceled, held on to them for the two years. Wow, Finally two got years. to see that. It was two years. She got pregnant. Yes. She paused the concert, and then it was two years after she had her son that she finally went back and did the concert, and it was worth it. It was two years worth it. When I tell you that woman took the stage snatched, she did not miss a beat. She did not miss a beat during that concert. And I was so happy to see her. And I'm side-eyeing you for calling us old because, yes, I saw the Jacksons when all six of them were on tour at Madison Square Garden. Yes, I am old enough for that. At least you don't look it. And it was the torture tour. And let me tell you, I'm glad I saw that because I was always in love with Randy. Everybody was running around after everybody else. Randy Jackson had my heart. So I'm happy to see that he's a part of this and that her and Randy still have a very close relationship and that they're very much still bonded because the family has become so fractured over so many things. And I don't know if everybody remembers, but when the Jacksons did, when the brothers did that, um, when they were doing their reality TV show, Randy wanted no part of it because he felt that they were trying to get the fame off of Michael's death. Mm. So it was really good to see that her and Randy are still very close. And what people don't know is there is a lot that, that the brothers do in the background you know people say michael and janet overshadowed them and to a certain degree it was it's true but there's a lot that they do in the background all of them are musical geniuses and you need to look things up because you'll be surprised how much they're actually involved in that you don't know that they're involved in Mm. i love the documentary I will say I have my own opinion about Janet and the child and the secret baby and everything, but you know what? That is her story to take to the grave, whatever the truth may be. That's her business. And it'll be her business until the end. And I'm not going to speculate because it ain't my child and I wasn't there. Um, And I guess finally I wanted to mention (laughs) um, that, listen, it's very telling that Randy referred to Joe as your father Mm -hmm. because that tells you about the disconnect that he had with his own father that he refers to him and your father this and your father that a psychologist would have fun with that because it shows a, a very big disconnect and I don't know if anybody else caught it, but it made me real angry. I'm sorry. I went over That's okay. Um, during the dinosaur, during the dinosaur interview, when she asked 
Joe, how um, do you take them over your knee or something? I'm like, like you going to ask this black man on national television mm. if he if he corporally punishes his famous children. Like, are you serious? Like, it was such a disrespectful question to me. And you could see the look on Joe's face. Like, if these cameras were on, woman, I would tell you about yourself. But it was like, you don't, they didn't ask those questions of the of the Osmond family. You, mm. and, and they had a very famous kids and the parents involved. But you asked that question of the black man with his famous kids. And gotcha. there was something that Janet said, you know, she said about, you know, being disciplined and everything. She said tyranny with uh, discipline without uh, without love is tyranny. Our parents loved us. Mm. We, I don't know about anybody else. I'm in my 50s. We grew up in an era where corporal punishment was part of growing up. Yeah. We got whippings, you know, as we called them. You got whippings. You went and got the switch. That's how we were raised. It wasn't abuse to us. Our parents were raised that way. The slaves were whipped. That's where they learned it from. So know your history, people. We were raised that way, but our parents loved us. Just because they whipped us doesn't mean they didn't love us. And like Randy said, his friends are dead or, or in jail. Yeah. He's not. And that was his father. So for all the sins of Joe Jackson, he wanted his kids to stay off the drugs, stay out the gangs, and stay out of jail. Mm. And he succeeded in raising those kids to the best of his ability. We might not agree with it, but I have to respect the sacrifices that man made for yeah. his kids. Yeah. Sorry I went over, but... It's all right. It's all right. We appreciate you calling in, Miss Brooklyn. I'll see you tomorrow because you know what we got to talk about. Oh, please. I, I'm dealing with it right now. We'll talk about real estate in New York and, and co-ops and condos. Yes, we will. <laughs> talk to you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> All right, we're gonna callers. I'm not gonna give y'all that same luxury because I do have to have a life. It's Saturday and I have to go shovel again. Look, it looked like it stopped snowing. No, no, I still see some. No, it's still snowing. New York. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Kirby Jerry says he made the millionaires, but he also made them probably top notch, top notch artists as well. And I'm sure they've passed that on. What could his methods been better? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right. All right. Stephanie, I'm going to bring you up for a quick comment. What's going on, Stephanie? Hey, Kim Fire. How you doing? How are you? Good. I'm calling from Harlem, New York. It's hey. snowing like crazy. I got to dig out my car soon, too. Mm. But, <laughs> but I just had a few points on the documentary. Mm -hmm. The first one I want to talk about is the Bobby Brown issue. Yes. I think even though she didn't send, send the cease and desist or order mm -hmm. it like you said it doesn't mean that you know it's true what bobby brown is saying i'm not saying it's true or not true but what i do know is she knows bobby brown bobby brown is an attention whore we all know that he likes the limelight he has to be front and center we saw it with him and whitney and everything that's his insecurities so the best medicine for an attention whore is to ignore them. So I think that's why she's not addressing that issue at all. Just ignore him. Give him, mm. don't give him what he wants, which is more light, more shine off of her back. So mm. that's the Bobby thing. Um, in regards to how Randy kept referring to Joe as your father, what people fail to understand is the Jackson Five was already huge by the time Janet was born. So yeah. even when they went into the house, she doesn't remember anything about that house because they had already moved to California. Yeah. So my guess is that Janet has a different upbringing because she's the last child than the mm -hmm. rest of the children, where Joe could have been more strict and more abusive, I guess, towards the older ones, she probably didn't get that. She was the baby. She was the girl. And they were already high in, yeah. you know, in their celebrity. They were living in Encino. In they were the first Black family over there. So I'm sure the same struggles that they had in Gary didn't transfer there. So she probably experienced her father differently 
than the rest of her siblings. Yeah. Um, also, I felt bad for her because as big as Janet is, I think she could have been even bigger. Um, obviously, her being Michael Jackson's little sister overshadowed her career, but also all of the allegations that Michael Jackson had. Remember, she was talking about those allegations about the child molestation came out when Jan when the Janet album came out, which was huge. That was yeah. off the back of Poetic Justice. Yep. Like, so I feel like she always kind of got the short end of the stick just by being Michael Jackson's sister. Even though she's that huge, perspective she's there, icon. Stephanie. That was you really just gave me a perspective. I was like, what you're right. I mean, she talks about it tonight. She's going to talk about how uh, just guilty by association with with uh the whole Michael Jackson situation and the allegations. So you have a very right. good point. I just feel like she could have been just even we wouldn't know of Madonna. I feel like that that Janet should have been way bigger than even Madonna. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, there was one last thing. Oh, the last thing that I want to say is when I'm watching like the documentary or any person that I like and they're doing a the documentary, I tend not to watch it live with commentary because I just don't want someone else's opinion to jade my opinion on how I really feel about the content that's being brought forth to me. That's why I like your show, The Recap, because now after I've said my own opinion, I hear other people's perspectives and I can like go back and forth like, oh yeah, I agree. I missed that. Or I can be like, no, mm -mm, you're dead wrong. But I, all in all, I enjoyed it. I can't wait for tonight. And that was all. Thank you for Stephanie, I'll say this. Time. You know, when we have our watch parties, those of you, those of you that have watched with me on TikTok, uh, any show, there, I'm usually pretty quiet. Like, I'll, I'll chime in and say something, but I'm not really giving you my opinion. I save my opinion for the recaps. Oh, no, not you. I meant, like, No, I, no, I know, I know, I know, but I just wanted just to let comments. people know, just in case. <laughs> I'm not sharing my full-on thoughts uh, during during right. our little watch parties. But, Stephanie, thank you for the perspective. You re Wow. Wow. Have a great You're rest welcome. of your day. And, Have a great day, Campaya. Try and to lucky stay digging warm. Out. <laughs> Don't hurt your back shoveling yeah. that snow. <laughs> yeah, I, gotta, I, have a, I have a good um, shovel just for my back. So thank you for that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. See, we have some of the best perspectives and community. Guys, if you are not a part of the community, meaning that you're not subscribed to the Campfire Daily YouTube channel, subscribe. You can be a part of the conversation. You can even call in. You can even join our membership. You don't have to, but head on over to teamcampfire.com to see what you get by becoming a member of the channel. And thank you so much, Chocolate Chunks, for the super chat. Chocolate Chunks says this. I know a few people who have worked closely with Janet, and I met her about 10 years ago. She's super sweet and kind as, as she appears to be. I believe that. I don't think people, and that's the thing. I'm sure there have been rumors over the years, but those rumors have never stuck about Janet Jackson being a terrible person behind the scenes or a diva. Those have never um, stuck with Janet. Okay, we're going to take a, these last three callers. Don't anyone else call in. <laughs> Tella and Kendall and Jennifer, I'm going to take your, your comments in just a second. I'm going to bring Tella up first. What's going on, Tella? Hey, how you doing? I'm back, Empire. Yes, how are you? I'm good. I'm gonna run through my list really quick um, okay. and and get get some things straightened out. Janet and I are the same age. Okay, so I grew up with the Jacksons. I saw the Jackson Five, the Jacks, Michael Jackson, the Jacksons, and Janet Jackson. So I've been through all the whole change of the family, um, and I have some other direct connections to them. That's too long to talk about. I actually went to Rhythm Nation twice, um, and I didn't buy a ticket. So that'll tell you that. Oh, you better text the Ticket me was given to me. <laughs> oh, I want to you know. know. Um, let me roll back to Bobby Brown. There was a part in his movie where they saw him talking, all, the, all of the fellas, they were on this talk show, and he was talking about his love for Janet Jackson. It was BBD, Johnny Guild, and they were all representing who they were at that time. That actually happened. It was a show called Video Soul. So on BET, that I remember that clear as day, it actually happened. Bobby Brown talked about his love for Janet Jackson then, which was way before Renee. And that whole story is true. Okay. So she won't address it because she doesn't have time in this docudrama to, uh, to address everything. You didn't see anything about different strokes. You didn't see. I mean, so she had 
you, you're not going to see anything about poetic justice or any of that. She she has a whole thing going, a whole life. We don't even have enough time. Okay, so I didn't want to address the Madonna Janet situation. They weren't even in the same league. They had a totally different group, totally different um, audience base. Completely different. White, black. I mean, we love Janet. Yes, she crossed over, but Madonna really never did, except for one song when she first came out, which was Borderline. See, I'm mm -hmm. telling my age because I know what I'm talking about. OK, and so if we were when there was enough room for everybody like Michael Jackson and Prince, they actually were in the same genre of people, but slightly not. There's enough room for everybody. It's like comparing Whitney Houston to Madonna. That didn't happen either because we're still talking about a whole genre of people. And Madonna was way, way older. So it doesn't work. When we talk about Janet coming from um, Gary, she said that in last night that she didn't come to the, come to California until she was seven or eight years old. But she still doesn't have a lot of recognition. I mean, a memory of Gary because she wasn't there very long. Yeah. One more thing. The Jackson Five, their first song came out in 1970. I know this because I skipped to it. <laughs> OK, I played four square and all of that. To their first songs so that is why jackie was already out of high school janet was a was a kid but she didn't live in california then if you follow their um american dream um um mini series it was clear they were already in hollywood before they came yeah they were there a long time so yes i love janet i'm not a janet disciple um because again we're the same age so <laughs> i understand no i understand that but I want to tell you, thank you very much. And by the way, you know we loving you, baby. Uh, thank you so much. And we uh, loving watching you grow. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the perspective. I love the little education. And again, get back to me about how you got into the Rhythm Nation twice. Okay, I will. Just it has something to do with the Pointer Sisters. How about that? Oh, okay. Legends too. Went on tour with them. So let's go. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> You guys are amazing. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, of course, we are recapping part one. Part one. Well, technically part one and two, when you think about it, it's actually four parts. This Janet Jackson documentary. We will recap three and four or part two, whatever you want to call it, tomorrow afternoon. Stay tuned for that. Stay If you're not part of the community, join the Texas community or be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can get your notifications. Turn on that notification bell. All right, Kendall, I'm going to bring you up. What's going on, Kendall? Oh, I loved the the documentary last night. It was wonderful. I remember when their first song came out, like Tella said, uh, 1970, I was eight years old. And it was wonderful. We were like the minority in our area where we lived at because my dad was Native. So, and there were seven of us and two cousins. So, Joe Jackson, the way he disciplined that's not abuse. That's how we were raised in the day. And my parents were strict and I can totally see how Janet is still the way she is. She's a beautiful, kind, wonderful woman. And when control came out, that was the best rhythm nation. And I went to rhythm nation also. And, um, Stephanie so had a great, what? I said, you I'm never so went? mad. No, I th how oh. old was I when Rhythm Nation came out? I'm sorry. Uh, Rhythm Nation came out. Um, I was probably, I was in my 20s. So it was, he, yeah, it was, it was great. And I bartended in a little place in Kansas City called Westport. And it was um, I, at the Coliseum and it was number one request all night long. So wow. Yeah, but oh, yes. um, I was too, I, she, they were telling me it came out in 1989. Yeah, I was too young. Unless unless a parent was taking me, I couldn't have gone. Yeah, well, if she does too. if she does a a um, revival of Rhythm Nation, I think we should all go. We should I'm, like I'm put. Ready. Yeah, it's you know road trip. Let's go. And besides, I love your show. You have the best moderators, and I totally love your hoodie. Oh, that you have you. on this is banana republic it's not even my own stuff where do you get my own stuff <laughs> well when you get your own stuff i'm buying so you take thank care you. i love you you have a great day you too thank you bye-bye
All right, we're going to take one more caller, guys. If you're just joining us, we are recapping the Janet Jackson documentary. And I'm trying to think, was there anything else that I forgot to mention in, in regards to this? I already, I, like, I already pay respect to, to everyone. Look, they, show, they shared some really cute pictures of, this is not it. I was trying to find some of the cute pictures that they shared of James DeBarge. But James DeBarge, when he didn't look like this, oh, James, it's all right. He struggled, y'all. He struggled. And I love how Janet was just so kind to him in this documentary. I think she was very, very kind to him. But she ended up divorcing him because she couldn't deal with that. She couldn't deal with his addiction. And he struggled with his addiction for many, many years. Even his, his, um, oh, okay. is that his brother, Chico? Is Chico the brother? Is Chico a brother of theirs? I don't, I don't know. I don't, or maybe a nephew. Probably a nephew, right? Anyways, he even struggles with addiction. Look, shout out to everyone. Shout out to everyone that, that, that's struggling with addiction that is, you know, still you know sober right now and you've been sober for a while look i know it's not easy i can i can only imagine so you do have you have my support you have my sympathy at the same time because i just i can't even imagine i always say i always in and i'm being you know i'm joking here but i always say i must have been like the worst in a past life because i i i, I don't smoke i don't drink i don't do any of that stuff so i always think i must have been like bad in a past life Shantae, thank you so much for the super chat. Shantae says, these youngins will never understand a real woke era like the Rhythm Nation album. <laughs> that album spoke out against racism, sexism, homophobia, embracing your sexual freedom. Rhythm Nation was my first concert. Wow, that was a statement. Thank you so much. Oh, okay, Chico was the baby brother. Yeah, I was like, is Chico? Okay. Chico is James's brother. Okay, I wasn't sure because I was like, he was so young when he came, and then when he had his success as a as a his solo artist, that album is relevant today. Like she was ahead of her time. Shout out to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. You know, I think a lot of people don't give them the respect that they deserve uh, for the amount of music. It wasn't just Janet that they produced um, over the years too. There are a lot of really classic Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, Lewis songs that you probably don't even realize that you love. So shout out to them for being so legendary and for being such a, a I don't know if Janet was their muse or they just had a musical chemistry. And it was one of the rare times where we saw um, an artist just work with a set of producers on an album. We later would see it more and more, but shout out to them. I'm after this, I am definitely going to be playing some Janet Jackson music. Just say, and some Michaels and some Michael. All right. Marva, you're welcome. Mar Marva says, thank you. Kem thank you for this campfire. The first few minutes had me in tears recorded. it. Yeah, that that first couple of minutes when she she spots the mural of the Jacksons, Jackson five. I was like, oh, I didn't expect that at the very beginning. I didn't expect it at the big, very beginning. All right. Let me get to uh, one last caller. Jennifer, I'm going to bring you up. What's going on, Jennifer? Hey, baby. How you doing? How are you? Trying to stay warm under my heating blanket. I just wanted to say people don't realize that Janet was the baby. And I'm the baby of my family. And it's different. I was born in 73. So when When the Nation came out, I was in eighth, ninth grade. No, couldn't go because mama wasn't taking me. She's too old for that. But what they don't understand about Joe Jackson and the discipline and how he raised them was that you got to remember, we're like three, four generations from slavery. And back then, parents beat their kids. <laughs> But they didn't beat them without love. The Bible even spares, spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah. And back then, it wasn't as evident because we didn't have social media. They were killing little black boys left and right in Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana is one of the drug capitals of the world. He had to keep on his foot on them. Ooh, did we lose you, Jennifer? Yes, I'm right here. Hello? Okay. Yeah. And then... Uh oh, we went. We lost you. Again. Hello. Oh, we there we go. <laughs> then with Janet being the baby of the family, she was raised differently because by the time he got to her, that's when he said, "Your father." He could be a father to her mm. because he already did the hard part. He went through nine kids. He married off Ruby. He tried to marry off Latoya. She wasn't getting married. You know he dealt with the rest of the kids and by the time he got with janet he was too old to do all that beating and stuff 
You got to remember he's a baby boomer the time they grew up. Now, Janet was trying to find a way and help people because that's the way her mother was. If you remember the American Jackson's The American Family, that movie, her mother would sneak and give the neighbors food. Mm. Her mother was very kind. That's who she was. She was, but she didn't have to be Captain Savaho. But um, she was trying to save them because it was bringing her validation. Yeah. But Jana is very nice. She's very sweet. Um, and she's telling her story her way and the way she wants to. Yeah. Because people don't realize because she is Janet Jackson, she has had more misery than happiness in her life because she was Janet Jackson. I know what it's like. I grew up in Oil City, Pennsylvania. I was the only black girl in 1992 to graduate from my graduating class. So the stuff she went through, it's hard being the only one and wanting to relate to your black people. You don't fit in with your white people. You go to your black people. They say, you talk white, you white. It's, it's just a lot. She's had a lot more pain than happiness. And now she's taking back control of her life and telling her story her way. Kudos to you, baby. Yeah, definitely. Jennifer, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know I love me some of you. No, I appreciate you. And, and pay one of those little neighbor boys $10 to shovel your snow. They don't have those kids around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are too busy blasting music and 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 watching the snowfall. They're not doing it anymore. <laughs> it's all right though. I, I'm luckily I'm ha happy and healthy and strong. <laughs> you better put a back brace on because we get <laughs> age where Arthur will climb up your back and you won't be. You'll be laying on the couch watching the. You'll be laying on the couch tomorrow with Kim Pyre <laughs> doing that <laughs> out in the hall, laying on the couch. My back, Arthur got me. All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> she got a point let me be, be careful when i'm doing that guys thank you so much for calling in thank you to everyone that was a part of the conversation in the live chat thank you to everyone then that uh sent in a super chat appreciate you thank you to our moderators sending love to you and of course thank you to our team campfire and royal court members if you'd like to become a member of the channel head on over to teamcampire.com thank you all for being here tomorrow we will be recapping of course Ladies Who List Atlanta at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. And then later in the day, we will recap part two of the Jan Jackson documentary. If you're not a part of my uh, te uh, texting community, join textcampire.com and be there for our watch party on TikTok. Right, TikTok? Yes. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to play a new song. A new song. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Let me just say thank you, doll baby. Thank you so much for the super chat. I'll, I I still will get my switch. Oh, oh. <laughs> scared. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like the video if you haven't liked it already.
Thank you. 